Let us kindly rise as we sing the entrance hymn on our joyful lips, AA4, page number 9. AA4, page number 9. Turn my steps to the altar of God. I'll turn my steps to the gladness of my life. I'll turn my steps to the altar of God. I'll turn my steps to the gladness of my life. The fourth verse. Holy praises to God I will sing. I will trust and will Hope in the King, I'll turn my steps to the altar of God. I'll turn my steps to the gladness of my life. I'll turn my steps to the altar of God. I'll turn my steps to the gladness of my life. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Sisters and brothers, welcome to this Eucharistic celebration, which we are celebrating at the Bon Jesu Basilica, the shrine of St. Francis Xavier. All of you have great devotion to St. Francis Xavier. And so today we are celebrating on a Sunday the Feast of All the Saints, the 1st of November. Who is a saint? All the baptized are clothed with Jesus. And if we are clothed with Jesus, then our body, mind and spirit is sanctified. He is living in us, and so the saint is one who allows Jesus to live, love, and work through his or her thought, word, and deed. In the I Believe, there is a section where we say, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints. Every time we gather together in Jesus' name, in the church for prayers at home, we are the communion of saints. However, the church has always taken great pains to verify if a person in his or her life has truly lived fully united to Jesus and his or her actions, thoughts, words, writings have proven that he or she has really allowed Jesus to do what he wants to do through them. That is, spreading the good news and building up his kingdom, everything done for the greater glory of God. And how many of these are there in the Catholic Church? They have lived an exemplary life. Tremendous amount of suffering in which they have not given up but they have united their sufferings to Jesus. And that is how they have lived an exemplary life. They have never said anything bad against those who were persecuting them. This is a grace that has been working in them. But not only those who are raised to the altar, there are thousands and thousands of people who have lived a truly Christian life and not are not considered saints in the sense that they have been canonized. So today, the church honors all those saints who have been canonized, all those blessed, and all those who are in their way to the beatification and canonization, besides the rest of us who are living a very saintly life, life united to Jesus. But how many of us sometimes only are Christians by name, but not by example, not by our life. We're not really listening to God's word and his presence within us. Sometimes we are only a sham, pretending 
asking others to do, but we can't do it ourselves. Let us ask God to forgive us and fill us with his spirit so that we can genuinely live our Christian life. Let us all bow our heads, close our eyes, and ask God and one another pardon so that forgiven we may live a saintly life. I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and to, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, that, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts, thoughts in my and in my words, in what, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my, my fault, through my, my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, Mary ever virgin, virgin, all the all angels and saints, and, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to, to pray for me to the Lord our God. Let us bow our heads and receive this blessing. May Almighty God, our loving Father, have mercy on us as children, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. Please take hymn number 389 on page 164 on Praise the Lord, 389, page 164. Lord, have mercy on us all. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us all. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy. On us all, Christ have mercy on us, Christ have mercy on us all, Christ have mercy on us, Lord have mercy. Let us glorify the Lord by singing hymn number four on page number 10. Hymn number four, page number 10. Sing praises to the living God, glory, hallelujah. Come adore the living God, glory, hallelujah. Though sun and moon may pass away, His word will ever stay. His power is forevermore. Glory, hallelujah. Second verse. To the living God we sing. Glory, hallelujah. Let our love and praises ring. Glory, hallelujah. To his sons he always gives his mercy and his love. Praise him now forevermore. Glory, hallelujah. Verse 3. To the living God do not die. Glory, hallelujah. To the living God we cry, glory, hallelujah. He promised to be with us, and He lives in everyone. Love Him now forevermore, glory, hallelujah. Glory to the Trinity, the undivided unity. The Father, Son, and Spirit one. From home, all life and goodness comes. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, by whose gift we venerate in one celebration the merits of all the saints, bestow on us, we pray, through the prayers of so many intercessors, an abundance of the reconciliation with you, for which we earnestly long through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
one God forever and ever. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us now attentively listen to the word of God and allow the word to penetrate our heart so that we may be touched internally and transformed by it. A reading from the book of the Apocalypse. I, John, saw an angel ascend from the rising of the sun with the seal of the living God, and he called with a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm earth and sea, saying, Do not harm the earth or the sea or the trees till we have sealed the servants of our God upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of the sealed, a hundred and forty-four thousand sealed out of every tribe of the sons of Israel. After this, I looked, and behold, a great multitude, which no man could number, from every nation, from all the tribes and peoples and tongues, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed in white robes with palm branches in their hands and crying out with a loud voice, Salvation belongs to our God who sits upon the throne and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood round the throne and round the elders and the four living creatures and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God saying, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me saying, Who are these clothed in white robes and whence have they come? I said to him, Sir, you know. And he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great tribulation. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. Please repeat. Such, Such are, are the men, men who seek your face, O Lord. Lord. The Lord's is the great is the earth and its fullness, the world and all its peoples. It is he who set it on the seas, on the waters he made it firm. Such are the, the men, men who, who seek, seek your, your face, face, O Lord. Lord. Who shall climb the mountain of the Lord? Who shall stand in his holy place? The man with clean hands and pure heart who desires not worthless things. Your response? Such are the men who seek your face, O Lord. He shall receive blessings from the Lord and reward from the God who saves him. Such are the men who seek him, seek the face of the God of Jacob. Your response? Such, Such are, are the men who seek your face, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. John. See what love the Father has given us, that we should be called the children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. It does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he appears, we shall be like him for we shall see him as he is. As everyone who thus hopes in him pures, purifies himself as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. For, Acclamation. Please stand up and take the hymn number 96, praising his name. Praising his name, we sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, praising his name, 
Praising His name we sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, praising His name. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest, says the Lord. Praising His name we sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, praising His name. Praising His name we sing hallelujah, sing hallelujah, praising His name. The Lord be with you and with, with your spirit. spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Seeing the crowds, Jesus went up on the mountain, and when he sat down, his disciples came to him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. My dear friends, today we shall reflect on the theme, Becoming a Light in the World, which is quite similar to making a difference in the world, being a spark in the life of someone else. And therefore we see in today's world, one is able to make a difference only if one is committed and determined to do good. And to do this, a person derives strength and courage from his relationship with God. And probably we can ask ourselves this question, who doesn't desire the praise and respect of others? We all want others to see us at our best, to see us in all our strengths and our achievements. But we see that God sees us who we truly are people in need of his mercy, help, and guidance. And if we look at the first reading of today, we see that the first reading exhorts us to praise and give greater glory to God in all that we do. And it is only by working in a manner by which we give praise to God, it's only then that we can become a spark in the life of someone else. It's only when we follow the gospel values, when we follow the virtues that Jesus wants us to follow, it's only then we can make a difference in the world. And the saints are a perfect example of this. I'm sure that each and every one of us will have a few saints who inspire us, who motivate us to carry on with what we do. And if we look at all the saints, we see that they showed us how we can put into practice the virtues of the kingdom of God in the world. I'm sure when Jesus proclaimed about the kingdom of God, many would have had doubts, saying that in today's world, it's not possible to practice this. But here we see that these saints have been an example, they've been a model for us, and they motivate us through their lives to put into practice the virtues of the kingdom of heaven. And therefore we can take inspiration from their lives and thus 
become children of light. And this is exactly what the second reading exhorts us to do. The second reading exhorts us to live a life worthy to be called children of God. Now through baptism, all of us become children of God. God sent his son to spare us from eternal damnation. But that is not enough. We need to live a life that is worthy to be called his children. And this can be done again by following his virtues, by following his commands. And therefore, we can do this by changing our lives, caring for others, loving the neighbor as ourselves. If we look at the gospel of today, we have the Beatitudes. Now the Beatitudes are not a kind of rule or regulations, but in other words, they are the key to eternal happiness. And whatever we see in the Beatitudes, one may again say that this, in today's world, is it possible? But we see Jesus himself lived these virtues in his life. And therefore, he becomes a model for us, he becomes a motivation for us to lead and to lead this life. One of the main emphasis the Beatitudes lays on is true humility. And we see that respect for God and for his ways inclines us to humility and simplicity of the heart. And we may ask, what is the nature of true humility? And why should we embrace it in our lives? One can easily mistake humility as being something that is demeaning or harmful or basically not to feel good about ourselves. But true humility is not about feeling bad about yourself. It's not about having a low self-esteem, but it is looking at ourselves exactly the way we are, not higher or not lower. And therefore, a humble person is one who's able to make a realistic assessment of himself. He doesn't have to wear a mask when he's in the presence of others. He can be his natural self because he knows that he's true to himself. And therefore, we see that true humility frees a person to be himself, and therefore, it avoids him to fall into the traps and illusions that the world has to offer. And probably one can say that these Beatitudes were particularly given by Jesus to the Pharisees and the scribes. Because as we know, last week we have heard how the Pharisees were led by their misguided zeal and pride. They wanted to show that they were the true observers of the law. And as a result of that, they were able to follow everything so strictly that they made it difficult for the others to experience the love of God. And therefore, during this Eucharist, let us in a very special way pray for the grace that we too may imbibe this quality of humility and that we too may live a life following the virtues and the commands of God and thus become a spark in the life of others. Amen. My dear sisters and brothers, let us now all rise and brush up our inner selves with the conviction that we have of God who is dwelling in us so that we can shine like bright stars, like lights in the world. Let us profess our faith together. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, Almighty, creator of heaven, of heaven and earth. And earth. And in and Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ's holy his only Son, Son our Lord, Lord who, who was conceived, conceived by, by the, the power Holy Spirit, of the Holy Spirit born, born of the Virgin Mary, 
suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God always listens to our prayers, and so let us pray to him. Dear brothers and sisters, today we celebrate the solemnity of all saints. St. John, in his vision, sees a great multitude of people before the Lamb. These people have attained sainthood, and they are clothed in white robes and whole palm branches in their hands. Let us now confidently place our petitions before the Lord, saying, Lord, may the saints intercede for us. Lord, Lord may, may the, the saints, saints intercede, intercede for us. For the Pope, the bishops, and the clergy, that as people consecrated to God, they may live a life of holiness, thereby leading people to pursue a holy life. We pray. Lord, may the saints intercede for us. For all Christians, that by following Jesus, the Master and the Shepherd, and by living the Beatitudes, they may attain holiness of life, we pray. Lord, may the saints intercede for us. For Christians who have died, especially those near and dear to us, that after being purified by the blood of the Lamb, they may be admitted to their eternal dwelling place. We pray, Lord, Lord may, may the saints, saints intercede, intercede for us. us. That Christians may not be persecuted because of their faith, that no innocent person may be punished for something he or she has not done, and that no man, woman, or child may go hungry to bed. We pray, Lord, may, may the, the saints, saints intercede, intercede for us. For all of us present in this Eucharistic assembly, that encouraged by the examples of countless Christians who have attained sainthood, we too may resolve to follow the goal of becoming saints one day. We pray. Lord, Lord may, may the, the saints, saints intercede, intercede for, for us. My dear sisters and brothers, there are so many intentions in our hearts. Let us put forth these intentions before the Lord and we shall all pray for them together. Let us pray. Lord, Lord may, may the saints, the saints intercede, intercede for us. For us. God, our Father, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus, who has taught us the Beatitudes, practicing which is the surest way to become a saint. Holiness of life has always been the goal ever since you have called a people as your own. Give us the grace that we too may attain holiness in life. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for a quick control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We pray for the doctors doing research that an effective vaccine to combat the sickness is speedily found. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. For our offertory, we shall take on joyful lips, hymn number B2 on page number 68. B2, page number 68. We shall sing the verse 3. Take, 
Take thou the offering thy children make, all united for thy name's sake. For all the living take thou these gifts, for our brothers and sisters who join in prayer. For the absent ones, our hearts we lift. Keep them all in thy loving care. Take thou the offering thy children make. All united for thy name's sake. Pray, my dear sisters and brothers, that this our sacrifice and offering of ourselves and our prayers may be acceptable to God, our loving Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. May these offerings we bring in honor of all the saints be pleasing to you, O Lord, and grant that just as we believe the saints to be already as assured of immortality, so we may experience their concern for salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For today, by your gift, we celebrate the festival of your city, the heavenly Jerusalem, our mother, where the great array of our brothers and sisters already give you eternal praise. Towards her, we eagerly hasten as pilgrims advancing by faith, rejoicing in the glory bestowed upon those exalted members of the church through whom you give us in our frailty both strength and good example. And so we glorify you with the multitude of saints and angels as with one voice of praise we acclaim. Please take hymn number 389. 389 on page number 164. Holy, holy, holy Lord, earth is full of your glory. Glory fills the heavens to sing to him, Hosanna. Blessed is the one who comes, bringing great glory holy 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 lord sing to him hosanna you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come, until you come, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Philip our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. All of us in Jesus who are saints, who are living the ways of Jesus in us, in our thoughts, words and deeds, who are also praying for those who have asked us to pray for them. There are so many others who have no one to pray for. We keep them all in our hearts. And now, filled with the Spirit of Jesus, let us together say with Jesus, Our, our Father, Father, our Father who, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive, forgive us our trespasses, trespasses as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against us. us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, where you live forever and ever. May the peace of Jesus be with you always. And, and with, with your spirit. spirit. United to Jesus, let's turn to each other with some sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. This is Jesus. 
the Lamb of God, who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to receive him. Lord, Lord I am not, not worthy that you, that you should, should enter, enter under my roof, roof but only say, say the word, word and, and my, my soul, soul shall, shall be healed. healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Amen. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and I unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Amen. We shall take hymn number D27, page 113, on joyful lips. D27, page number 113. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. When I was hungry, you gave me to eat. When I was thirsty, to drink. Now enter into the home of my Father. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people, that you do unto me. Whatsoever you do to the least of my people that you do unto me. Take, O Lord, and receive all my liberty, my memory, my understanding, and my entire will, all that I have and possess. You have given all to me, to you, O Lord, I return it. All is yours. Dispose of it wholly according to your will. Only give me your love and your grace, for that is sufficient for me. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. As we adore you, O God, who alone are holy and wonderful in all your saints, we implore your grace so that, coming to perfect holiness in the fullness of your love, we may pass from this pilgrim table to the banquet of our heavenly homeland through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank you, my dear sisters and brothers, all you saints, for participating in this Eucharistic celebration. Every time we receive Jesus, Spiritually, or oh, actually, we are transformed by Him. And we become daily more and more like Him in our thoughts, words, and deeds. And so many of you are trying to do that and doing it in union with Him. St. Francis Xavier is always interceding for us. And so, I will give you a blessing with his relics. Today, the Mass was celebrated by me, Father Patricio Fernandez, the rector of the Basilica, and with me was accompanying uh, Deacon Lindsay Lobo. We thank you for participating, and now we shall receive the blessing. I will say the prayer to St. Francis Xavier, and then give you the blessing. O oh, devoted servant of God, St. Francis Xavier, your heart was burning with love for Jesus. 
impelled by this love, you went from country to country and spent yourself unto death, proclaiming the name of Jesus and the good news of salvation. That is why the Father filled you with glory in heaven and preserved your body from corruption here on earth. Filled with joy for these unique gifts, we join you in praising the Father. And now we ask your intercession for ourselves. You may pray for any of the things that you want from St. Francis Xavier. We ask you to obtain for us the fulfillment of these desires, if they are pleasing to the Father. And for everything, together with you, we praise the Father through Jesus in the Spirit. Amen. And may Almighty God bless us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our final recessional hymn, we shall take G52, page number 209. G52, page 209. When the sun has set and the night is on, when the darkness falls and the light has gone, you be my light, O oh Lord, and lead me on. You be my light. 